When you build financial models, it is important that there is a logical flow and as much as possible you must try and only do calculations once. So for example, we're just going to go through a flow of a financial model and you'll see here where there's green, that's a brand new calculation. Where there's beige, it means we've just linked the calculation. So as a starting point, you always have an opening balance sheet. You'll see here we've got our equity, retained earnings, debt, fixed assets, working capital, etc. Even if this is just zeros, we have an opening balance sheet so that we know that that's what we're going to start with. These are all beige because inevitably you're going to get them from somewhere else or just type zeros in. The next step, most people budget at an income statement level. We prefer to start at cash flow, but for the purposes of this example, we're going to go as if we start with the income statement. So you'll see that the next step is to get the calculations for the income statement. Notice most of these are green because these are brand new calculations. So how you get to the sales figure and the cost of sales and other costs just depends on the type of financial model you're building. Typically you'll get down to about the EBITDA level based on that. Then you'll reach something like depreciation. Now depreciation is not a standalone item and in fact you need to do a lot of calculations around the fixed assets before we can use it. So notice that we've got a concept here of notes or buckets. These are separate calculations that are required in order to help you get to an answer. So you'll see we've done a fixed assets bucket, debt and assessed losses. The reason this is useful is now depreciation can be pulled from there, interest from there and tax from there. But in order to get these buckets you had to do a lot of other work and you'll see the benefit of that just now. You'll then have your earnings and retained earnings and you now have got to a point where you've modeled the income statement. We can now move to the cash flow statement and notice that suddenly there's a lot less green. This is because we've done quite a bit of the work in the first two stages and we should now just need to link. So for example the cash flow looks at EBITDA we would get that from the income statement. Interest paid, if you remember we did a debt calculation. Tax paid, we've already in the bucket section done an assessed loss calculation. So based on what we currently did it looks like working capital requires a little bit of work. So again we can do a separate bucket to work that out. Investment and cap spend, in order to get to depreciation we had to do this calculation so we just have to link it. Equity financing, perhaps we haven't done that so we need a new bucket. The debt financing, we've already built the bucket to get to the interest calc. So that one's already done, it's just a link. It results in the cash and the cumulative cash. Most importantly then, the closing balance sheet, you'll notice, is all beige. Because you shouldn't need to do any calculations here. Every one of these should be able to link. So this equity should link to the equity bucket. Retained earnings should look at the income statement. Debt at the debt bucket, fixed assets at the fixed asset buckets, working capital at these buckets and the cumulative cash bank over here. If you do it this way the balance sheet has to balance.